Imagine this world. Huge, fusion-powered, magnetrine skyships float gracefully through the air. Robots wander the city, moving cargo and people. But your cell phone is still about the same size and shape as a house brick. I'm Rex Celestes, the Chicago Geek Guy, and today we're talking about Free League's Tales from the Loop and role-playing in an 80s that never was, because that's how we roll. Released in 2017, Free League's Tales from the Loop offers the opportunity to roleplay in an alternate 80s. Players take on the roles of 10 to 15 year old children as they explore the mysteries around two massive super colliders, one in Sweden and one in the United States. It's a rules light system, playing through in scenes and using a very simple dice mechanic. Today, we're going to demonstrate these rules. This is not a review or a playthrough. We hope to teach you the game so that you can more easily give it a try for yourself. Tales from the Loop ask for dice rolls when characters get into trouble. The kids need to overcome something before they can do what they want. In these situations, players roll a number of six-sided dice equal to the appropriate attribute plus skill. Every six counts as a success. More difficult tasks require more than just one success. If the character can use their iconic item, determined at character creation, they can get two extra die. Characters can also use their pride, another characteristic, once per session to automatically succeed on a trouble roll. Let's see how this plays out in a sample session co-starring Spawn of the Chicago Geek Guy, Trinity. At the bottom of the hole lies a stone tablet with a strange figures and characters on it. I pick it up. Do I understand what it says? Not without studying it at the library. Okay, I put it in my backpack and bicycle over to the school library. A while later, I sit at a table covered in books. Okay, roll comprehend. I have four mind and three comprehend for a total of seven dice. I get six, so it means success. When you open a book about pharaohs, you realize these are Egyptian hieroglyphics. The tablet must have traveled through some sort of portal from another time. It tells about a monster with hard skin and long, two-fingered hands that can easily lift a grown man. Do I get what that means? No more than you've already figured out. Players can also ask for a role when trying to question or convince an NPC. Here's another example. Are you sure you weren't at the movies last night? Yes, why did he keep asking me? Billy looks really mad that you asked him that again. I want to see if he's lying. Okay, we'll emphasize. Success. I want to know if he's lying and what he really feels. He's totally lying. Well, he seems mad. He's really just scared about something. Whenever there's trouble, there's the possibility of consequences. Failing a role in Tales from the Loop means checking a condition or facing some new trouble. Characters don't take damage, they get upset, frightened, exhausted, injured, or broken. Each check condition takes one die away from a pool. Unless the character is broken, broken characters fail every roll until they recover. A new trouble may occur at the discretion of the GM. Let's say a kid fails a roll while trying to sneak past some guards. Now they may have to roll again to escape the guards or to prevent getting captured. Players can use extra success to buy beneficial effects as described by the individual skills. Players can buy extra effects multiple times. This gives the opportunity to players to get a lot more than they originally asked for. I roll force to run my brother to the ground. Three sixes. Can I buy effects? Of course. You can buy two effects. Let's see. If I can buy two effects, he is humiliated. I don't have to roll again for the exact same trouble. Okay. Remember, it's the exact same trouble. If he attacks you in front of others, you won't have to, you'll beat him without rolling the dice. Now, tell me how you wrestle and humiliate your brother. 
If a player fails or succeeds on a roll, they can choose to re-roll it right away in exchange for checking a condition. The player has to describe what they are doing, how they are drawing on their inner reserves or stretching their limits. Pushing a roll can snatch success from the jaws of defeat or build on the success by allowing for the purchase of extra effects. I'll look him in the eyes and probably look sad. But please, Mom, if you don't drive us, we'll miss the party. Roll charm. Damn, I miss. She looks stern and is about to say something. Do you push? Yeah, of course. I look away and say with a cold voice, Dad was alive. He would have done it. What condition do you check? I'm getting really upset now. Okay, re-roll all dice. No successes this time, either. She doesn't say anything. She just looks at you. I start crying for real now. With shame, I go to my room. I feel horrible. Kids can help each other. Describing how their character helps another may add one die to the pool of the rolling character. Kids fighting against each other roll separate pools. Whomever rolls the most successes wins. Tales from the Loop. Role-playing in an 80s that never was. Now, I was actually role-playing in the 80s, but I think it's safer for all of us we don't talk about it. If you think you might like this system, take a look at Mutant Year Zero and Coriolis. Both are also published by Modifius Games. Both games use something very, very similar. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts or criticisms, please leave them in the comments below. Like the series? Subscribe! Until next time, I'm Rex Celestes, the Chicago Geek Guy, with my special guest star, Trinity. And that's how we roll.